let us talk about the binary outcomes. In the binary outcome, one thing that is different than the continuous outcome is that we can no longer use the linear regression model. Why not? Because the binary uh, variables usually follow the binomial regression uh, and the continuous outcome generally follow the normal regression. So if we try to follow, uh, fit a linear regression model using a binary outcomes, obviously the diagnostic plots that you will get uh, will not be good enough. So that is why we need to go through the logistic regression to fit this model. And obviously we are dealing with an outcome that has two levels. One, one is uh, whether that person was dead or not, yes or no type of question. So we need to specify them uh, in a, what are the levels of this death, yes or no, um, in, in our uh, data. And the data has to be factor variable for us to use the carrot package. All right, now, previously when we had Continuous outcome, we were using R square, adjusted R square, and root mean square error and all that, right? But when we are dealing with the binary outcome, there are some other measures that we could still use, but we cannot directly use the R square or root mean square directly. There are some R square that we can still use, but those are pseudo R square and those do not have a clear interpretation like R square. In a continuous variable, the R square interpretation is between zero and one. The pseudo R scores do not have any interpretation like that. Um, so the most popular estimate people use the area under the curve in the rough curve. That is the most popular estimate that use. And uh, if the prediction is no good, if like a quantos and a prediction is giving you the same results, you will get a AUC of 0 0.5. And if you had the best prediction, all of the predicted value and the outcome values are the same, you would have an AUC of one. So that means what, from 0 0.5 to one, right? That would be the measure of the AUC. And there is another measure known as the Breer score. And in the Breer score, zero would mean the best prediction and one would mean the worst prediction. So the interpretations are slightly different than the R square, uh, but these are the two measures that we can generally use. Using, if you are using carrot, you will most likely get the estimates of the AUC directly. Um, and that's what we are going to rely on. Okay, so in terms of the prediction, we are basically focusing on death, not the length of stay anymore, right? So death is yes. And we are going to use the exactly same same covariates and all that. Uh, we are not going to change anything. Um, so we have exactly 50 covariates. And see, this is the formula. The only thing that is changed in this formula versus the previous formula is the name of the outcome. Everything else is exactly the same, right? And when we are using the logistic regression, we cannot use the LM function anymore. So we have to use a generalized linear model function. And then we have to specify that family is coming from a binomial logic link, just to make sure that we are not working with a continuous or Gaussian type of distribution anymore. So once you specify this, you will exactly get a logistic regression out of this region. Okay. You can fit it and you can use the published package to make your fit look nicer. So this is the model, exactly the same model, only the outcome is different, outcome is death. And this is the adjusted fit that you are going to get. The one difference that is you are seeing here versus the previous fit that you have seen for the continuous outcome is that we're seeing odds ratio here. These are not the beta coefficients directly out of the regression. So these are converted into odds ratio and the null value of odds ratio is, anybody knows? One, yes. All right, so you see the reference values are now one. Previously the reference values were zero, now the reference values are one. And then you can compare, like um, compared to your reference value, how much is your uh, uh, value. Again, no interpretation necessary for this because you are building a prediction model, no necessary for the p-values and stuff like that. Unless you are absolutely sure this is a completely unnecessary variable, that is a very different issue. You do not need to in include unnecessary variables in your model. Okay, measuring the prediction. Uh, so we are basically going to use the, one of the packages called PROP, uh, and we are using uh, the function ROC 
to find out the um, value of AUC. What we need to do is we need two things similar to before. We need the observed value and we need the predicted value. How do we get the predicted value? We simply get the fit and we specify the response. Since we are using the exactly same data, we do not have to worry about the uh, covariates or well, uh, very, uh, different data or anything like that. So in this example, we are getting our area under the curve of 0 0.7682. What do you think about this? Like, is it any good, as bad as before, like, or very good? Yeah, right? Because the range we're talking about is 0 0.5 to 1. And this is like halfway through, right? So <laughs> previously we were like 10% range and now we are like making some progress. Okay, and you can also plot because this is area under the curve, right? So all it is doing is calculating what is the area under this curve uh, and giving you the estimate. Okay, and you can, if you wanted, you, you could estimate the Breer score as well. Uh, and this is coming from the desk tool package and you are getting the Breer score of 0. 1.8. Remember the rear score worst value is one, best value is zero. And 0 0.18, what do you think? Good, okay. Okay, now let us straight jump through the cross validation. What we can do using cross validation and how do we specify the numbers? Notice that there are some additional parameters that I'm going to use here. Because I'm dealing with classification problem and I want to estimate the probabilities because the probabilities will be uh, used to estimate the sensitivity and specificity, which will be then used to calculate the area under the curve. So I need to specify the class probability and the summary functions. All right, so that is on the train control side. When, when I'm using the train control function, I need to specify on top of CV, K, five for cause validation, I need to specify these two parameters or arguments. And then when I use the train function, uh, we already had this JLM. Uh, we already had this uh, family equals binomial. I did not specify logic because logic is the default. And then I have to specify which metric because caret generally produces other metrics that I generally do not like. But this ROC metric I like because this gives you the area under the curve and that has some interpolation. So uh, I'm specifying and telling uh, the caret package to give me the ROC. Uh, from this or, or the AUC. Okay, okay. Generalized linear model. This is using how many samples for uh, how many predictors? No uh, processing cause relation fivefold, and then this is the average of all of the five ROC that you get. There are some other sensibility specificity. Uh, I do not really care too much about them uh, in this particular example. Okay. And also, you could, if you wanted, you could try to extract all of the different ROC that you had in each of these folds. And if, if you take the average of them, you, you get exactly the same result. Uh, remember, I talked about pre processing. So, what this pre processing does is that if you had a continuous variable, Sometimes what happens is that, say for example, you, you are measuring your height in one unit uh, and you are measuring your weight in one unit. Uh, you are, when you are measuring your uh, circumference waist, you are then measuring in, say for example, one was me measured in feet, another was measured in meter. So the scales would be very different, right? And in that scenario, comparing those two variables would be very hard. So one thing you can do is to tell Carrot to center all of these, uh, observations if they were continuous and the scale all of these variables if they were continuous. So all of this issue with different scales would be uh, mitigated by just saying that pre-processing equal to uh, center and scale and, and that would solve the problem. You do not have to use it if you do not have that problem, but if you have that problem, then you can use it. And once you do that, exactly same step and all that, you see the ROC value did not really change that. So in our particular example, it was not that effective, but there are situations where th those options are useful. Okay, so far I have just talked about linear model and logistic model, nothing else, right? 
but let us also talk about some of the other options. Because we have 50 copywriters, maybe all of these 50 copywriters are not that useful, right? Maybe we can do some AIC based variable selection to try to figure out what is the best model, right? But then again, if you are, if you are relying on only one data, you might get overly optimistic result. So why not do the variable selection within the each, each of these folds and then average out the results? And that will probably give you the better understanding of what is going on. So in terms of methods, remember previously I, I was using GLM and now I'm using the GLM step AIC. So what that means is that, that I still want to use the logistic regression model, but do the variable selection using the AIC. Uh, AIC is basically a penalization. Like if you have more covariates that are not useful, it will penalize the results. And then these are the, all of the same uh, uh, arguments. The only argument I have is the backward and that is coming from the steps function that I want the backward stepwise process. And see, even after doing the variable selection, the RFC values were somewhat similar, right? So there was not a lot of advantages after doing the variable selection. If you had um, five folds and you're in one fold, it would drop certain amount of variables. In the second fold, it would drop certain amount of other variables. In the third fold, certain amount. So it might be the case that all of these, in all of these folds, the final models are not unique, right? But fortunately for us, we do not really care about the interpretation of each of these variables. All we care is the ROC that we are getting, right? Because we are interested in just the predicting the depth, nothing else. So in our example, it might make sense. But if you are interested about interpretation, that's probably not the process.